Hi folks, welcome back to the garage now. Playing with this thing again. Uh, just been at a pub, had a pint, Sunday lunchtime, come back. Just decided I'm getting bored with this. This can, as I explained in the previous video, you can't stubby it because it's got a, an internally welded, where is it? It's got like an internally welded choke down inside it. Uh, kind of both ends, but I reckon there's a way. I just have to think about it. And you do your best contemplating in a pub garden with a nice pint of ale. And I reckon if I cut this first, I can then, because what I've done, I've drilled these out. I'm going to stubby this. What I'm going to, I'm going to stubby this. I've had enough. It's way too long. It's like the Dartford Tunnel, and it's not making a right noise. And there are, I think one of you guys suggested getting a cheap can off eBay that I can stubby, which is a good idea. But this one, you sort of could I suppose you can do anything if you want if you try hard enough there's just a method around most things and I'm just determined to do something with this so what I've done is I drilled these out and rubber mallet on the end of that it ain't going anywhere normally these little stainless caps just pop out especially on carbon cans because you manipulate them around and they just pop out but this ain't coming this is airtight sealed and I reckon this billet goes in well, about an inch and a half uh, I've drilled through there when I was putting these in and there's just wad in the other side of that so it's no big it's not, it's not much longer than that but it ain't coming out and it's probably pressed in I don't know um, but there's a way around all things and I reckon if I cut it first and then I can open this up and literally peel it off the end cap then I've got the end cap and I've got a sealed end and I can then work with it from there if I have to cut the tube inside that's not impossible so that can be dealt with but I'm determined to do something with it it's not the end of the world I've got a standard can a factory original can and I've even got my little dafty baffle that goes in the downpipe so I can still get the use the thing day to day so I can stick around stay tuned I'm going to cut this through first of all so that I can get inside it um, this is the length I've decided uh, it's about 12 inches long and when you're cutting through I never use a disc and go round because you never go round and meet where you started. You end up in a spiral and you've got a gap. It's better to cut straight, straight down through. I don't have a band saw or a disc saw. I've just got a hand saw. So the simplest way, I've got this. I've got the strap and bolted the strap round. Where looking at that on the end, that's still quite a nice can. And that from there to there is still going to be. An 11 inch can with the end cap on top 13 inches long that's still plenty to be going on with and the strap looking at the little corrosion mark sits there so considering that will be exposed that's about halfway ish so the cans going to be roughly half before the strap and half after the strap so this bits coming off and the easiest way to do it is measure from there to there and then to this precise joint here that's seven and three eighths all the way around so I've turned the can over so that is absolutely parallel with that all the way around so that's all set up and that's bolted up tight so that's a nice guide and all I've got to do is run the hacksaw perfectly and carefully and slowly right the way down through it so I'm going to get, 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 get hacking down through that cut the thing in half and then I might get to beat this end cap off from the inside even if I have to destroy all of this I will be able to get to that and once I've got to it and it's naked I can grind that surface down so it's a bit smaller and it will then go in this end can I will make it work y'all know me I'll find a way so let's get cracking let's get sawing through this stick around stay tuned see how it goes right, starting off with a brand new Eclipse blade nice and crisp and sharp up against the stainless so it won't go sideways use the whole thing so you go straight down to it like a salami. Just feel it now starting to go down through the center tube.
and there it is. Right. Now I've got to see if we can get that cap off. Now that end is controlled, coming close, by this strap is perfect. So where the saws, as you can see, not quite gone, I'm just going to file that so I get a perfect round because when the cap goes back in I need it to be perfectly correct. Let's just get a file on that quick. that's got that completely level now. If you've got a carbon can and you want to do this, the trick is to use two, two big Jubilee clips and put them around it and they'll hold it in a circle. It won't squash as you saw down through it because carbon fibre is flexible. So I've just done that on the stainless uh, strap and the stainless resists any movement filed up against it. Nice sharp edge. So that's that prepared. Now I've got to see if I can get this bit of cannage off, get this end cap out. Just going to cut down through there. So that... Okay, and that, and there it is. It come off after a while. From Del Monte, you say yes. Stanley. Nice to see what we've got in there. And there it is. So, okay, it would appear this end cap, which looks like it's billet from the outside, is in fact cast and really not that simple. Really not as sophisticated as it looks. That is going to be a piece of cake. Now, so I take it all back about a Yoshi can not being stubbyable. It most certainly is. I've just got to take that off flush, leave a little stub on there, that little tapered piece which will go inside there and hold it and then just bat that on and rivet it in. A little bit of cleaning up to do. I'm going to clean those rivets out inside there because obviously they're stuck inside and that will be a stubby. So let's get cracking. Let's clean this up. Okay, this is the simplest little job. It would appear, like I said, I was right. You can't get these end caps off because they are welded. That is some way pressed or welded or in some way bonded to that. That is not coming off. Uh, you can... There's no way, and when you consider that, that that was one piece joined to the front, there's no way that will come apart even with the rivets in. So cutting it in half is the only way to get to this, and I'm going to have to cut that off there because I don't need that bit. And as this inner piece here goes inside that quite nicely, that means that if I cut it down, it'll go in there quite nicely in a minute. But the first problem has been there's these little shoulders. The thing that I can't get out is these are the old rivets and they're kind of stainless rivets trying to drill down through them they're just stainless and you end up going into the alley and making a right mess you can't beat them out because it's cast not billet so you'll just crack it and shatter it but the simplest thing I'm just going to put rivet there there and there instead because that's a thinner finish and it will just have rivets top sides and bottom and supposed to on the corners which is no problem at all so the job for now just before I can start getting that to work, is just get a file, clean around this joint so that it slips in when I go to tap it in place and I'm going to put some silicon on that when it comes to it to seal it so it's nice and gas tight. So just at the moment, just filing around there. This is the, filing, this is the old mating surface against the inside of the can. Just take the time to get it nice and smooth and perfect and it will slip in and make a nice seal. Right, there we are. Now, 
cleaned up around the outside. As I said, I'm not going to use these holes because the old pins are well and truly stuck in there. I'm going to drill new ones. That, by rights, should go in there. Yep. And with a little bit of, this is, as you can see, it's, like, it's a bit free. So with a bit of manipulation, that will go in there nicely. I'll take this strap off. I'm going to get that back together and then just start drilling it for its new rivets. Stick around. Right. And what I've done is had to cut that down with the tin snips because this cap, that's welded in there. And it was right what I said. There's no way you'll get that end cap off of Yoshi. There's no way because they're welded in to the tube somehow. I have no idea how they do it inside. Maybe that's pressed or pinched on my machine. Whatever. It ain't coming off. But once you cut it in half, you can saw it off. And that will now go in there. And it's just a case of manipulating it in. Um, this is attempted to go round again, so I'm going to drop it in your work, mate. And just squash it so it goes a bit oval again. Right way up, because that'd be fun. Point it to the sky. Right. Now all I'm doing again is using this silicon sealing compound. This is just the stuff you do your windscreens with. And once it's in a tight joint, it dries like a rubber and forms a nice seal. And it also helps it slide together like an assembly paste. What oozes out will just wipe off. Once it's dry, good catch. Just gotta screw that in. That reovals the pipe gently. Beatage. Now take it out because I don't want to dents in the side of it. Look at that. Look at the airtight. That won't even need rivets. But I shall put them in. Beaten in. Like I said, this sets like hard rubber, so it will just rub off with the fingers when it's dry. But for now, it will give an absolutely airtight seal. Because a gas leak is an obvious MOT fail. We can't have that. Use a rubber mallet, it's quite easy. Just beat it on that corner. That's gone in lovely. Absolutely lovely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Cloth. WD finish. Finish. Make no more. And there it is. All I'm going to do now is assemble. You drill the holes straight through because these uh, heavily shouldered bits with the old rivets in are there on the corners. I'm just going to go bottom, top, side and side where it's thinner. This is just 6mm thick inside plus the, the sheet. That will go straight through there with a nice regular rivet. So just got to get some holes drilled. Get it riveted. Oh, in the pretty. Whatever's best. Okay, little center punch first. About 6mm in from the outside. There's about half an inch, I suppose, of shoulder inside that we're drilling straight through. So come in roughly just more than halfway in from that, just over halfway over that shoulder, because I'm only too close to the edge of this sheet. A nice sharp single tap, that's all it takes. Don't go tap, 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 because it will jump and you'll end up with five cent punches. It's just a tape. 
clever. Secure you subject. Don't laugh. It's not funny. Don't laugh at the funny man. Right. So this time, whether I can do it without. There we go. Now what we're doing now is just going down through the sheet and through the billet or cast alley. Make a hole for a rivet. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs> Come on! There's a bloke in Australia gonna get a spike in his ass in a minute, sat on the lawn. Sorry! Pop it through the terrorist one's lawn. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Right. There we go. And a rivet. Rip, 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 rip. Stainless steel rivets, for obvious reasons. Put it in. Just fire off. There you go. Jab it. Right now that's held top and bottom now. I'm just going to do one in each side. And that's an airtight joint. That's got that silicon all the way around on the inside of this and on the surface of that. So it's a perfectly airtight sealed joint. No leaks. And there we go, right, let's get the last two rivets in, get it fitted. Okay, a little clean up with the oil and the scotch brite. Just get all the little marks off it, give it that nice satin sheen again. There you go. Job well done, I think. So, I take it all back really. Initially, when I look down inside this, there's this big welded choke and there's this one, this other end. And there's no way you can just dry out those and then pull the ends off. It just doesn't work. It's not going to happen. You have to cut it and then cut off the outside and weld it, uh, cut the weld on the inside. So it is possible, just a little bit more surgery. And I'm still not sure whether I like stubby cans. It looks dinky. No idea what it's going to sound like. So. Why don't we put it on the bike and find out? Pop slip on those that came straight out. stubby cans but that was 18 inches long it's now 11 I must admit I do like that certainly better than it was don't know what it's going to sound like at 8,000 revs on the bypass but we shall find out in the morning and away to work there it is Yoshi can stubbied thanks for watching Delboy's Garage See you next time.